Welcome to the Flat Pack Factory. In today's episode, we'll look at the programmable ignition system from Elliott Power Sports. Stick around and we'll see how it works and how it's different from the stock unit. About two years ago, the guys from Elliott Power Sports got in touch with me and asked if I was interested in a fully electronic programmable ignition for the Rotax. Here's the item listed on Elliott Power Sports website. It comes with the ECU, the wiring harness, a USB cable for your PC. The software is also included. You will need a 12 volt battery supply. Taking a closer look, you'll see the connectors are stock Rotax units. You couldn't ask for more plug and play than this. For those that don't know, the stock unit is completely serviceable for a stock engine. And it works to some degree for a race engine. But the racier your engine build becomes, the less well the stock ignition unit works. One of the problems caused by a stock Rotax ignition when paired with an aggressive race cam is unstable idle. Every once in a while I come across or hear a discussion on how to get their race Rotax to idle well and it immediately goes to check in the pilot jet or maybe looking for an air screw or wait what kind of carburetor do you have oh no you have to have insert my favorite carburetor or it'll never work I can tell you that I've had many Rotaxes professionally tuned by technicians using dynamometers and an O2 sensor and it's been tuned just right they still won't idle because while that is important, that's not the problem. The problem is timing that is so far retarded that it simply will not idle effectively. Because the sputtering, loping, coughing, popping, stalling Rotax is caused by the stock ignition timing paired with a race camshaft. Another problem with the stock Rotax ignition curve in an engine with an aggressive camshaft is combustion taking place while the exhaust valves are open. This will result in your trick titanium valves getting flame broiled into the consistency of butter. After a while of that, you'll have some very expensive parts exiting the end of the exhaust can at a high velocity. To try to avoid this problem, I had long convoluted plans to avoid idling and staging for very long. Sometimes logistically this just wouldn't work. There'd be something happen, there'd be a red flag, there'd be a restart, um, maybe I'd stall, um, or it would just take longer than I thought, or maybe I barely made it to my race because I didn't time it correctly. So this was a big problem for me. If my timing wasn't right and the headers were glowing translucent hot, I would kill the engine and then I'd have to start looking for somebody to help push start the bike when it was time to go out on the track. And getting good push starting help is not as easy as it used to be. It's becoming a bit of a lost art. A programmable ignition unit with the proper ignition advance will allow even the beefiest Rotax to idle with all the drama of a Toyota Camry. This leads me back to the call that I got from Elliott Power Sports. We talked about what this unit should be capable of then I talked to my engine builder about it. Then my engine builder talked to Elliot and Eli. And in no time, the unit showed up at my house with the proper ignition curve already programmed in. By the way, I did pay for it, so this is not a paid advertisement. Let's look at where I mount the ECU on my motorcycle. I use industrial Velcro to mount it to the front of my mudguard with the electrical connector pointed upwards to route the wires to the tail section the stock coil is utilized. My buddies at Ballistic Batteries hooked me up with this cool quick connect charger for easy charging at the track. Not included with the EPS kit, but it's cool. They also set me up with this small lithium ion battery I used to mount to the front of my mudguard under my shock. However, they no longer make batteries and I want a spare, so I'm gonna transition to something new. This is what the software looks like when it opens up. There are a lot of features, but we'll just focus on three of them today. The first field highlighted is the soft limiter. 
This is where you input the RPM you'd like the system to begin skipping every third ignition spark. The field above labeled limiter is the absolute maximum engine speed that spark will be produced. Switching to the advanced map tab is where you can view and adjust your ignition advance curve. So that's pretty much what the system looks like, what a good one should do, and how it's installed on my bike. Of course, your installation will be somewhat unique depending on how some of your bits go together. Now let's plug the laptop into the ECU, fire the bike up, and see what this thing sounds like. When we're running the bike, check in this section, lower right hand corner of the screen for a limiter where it says no. When the bike's running, when the soft limiter comes in, it'll go purple. And then when the hard limiter comes in, it'll go red. It's gonna vibrate quite a bit, so you're probably not gonna be able to read it. But that's where to look. I noticed is the bike starts faster than it ever has before and then idles like a streetcar with no drama. You don't have to sit there blipping the throttle and waiting for it to adjust to the temperature to idle a little bit better because your idle was low or the other way around. It just idles with no drama whatsoever. The headers never glow red and it is very smooth in its eye. The rev limiter has been a little bit different for me. It works great, but I've been riding the Rotax so long that I have trouble trusting it. When I'm in the fight on the bike, in the battle, and I get to where I've learned it should stop revving, I roll out of the gas. I didn't really realize that I do this, but I begin using a tachometer uh, on uh, a regular basis at all times in uh, 2011. And since then, uh, through close monitoring of the tattletale function on the tachometer, I've gotten a pretty good feel for where or what it, what revs feel like and sound like. So what I've discovered is the, the trust level that I have, well, I guess I just don't have one yet. I'm slowly learning to, to trust it just because it's so different from what I'm used to. I hope that doesn't sound like a negative or a complaint because it's neither. The system works flawlessly. It's just like a modern bike that many of us have become used to or maybe some of the younger guys don't know anything different. It works just perfectly. When the soft limiter comes in, it skips every third ignition pulse. That seems to be enough power cut that you really can't accelerate past it. Then when the hard cut comes in, the engine of course just stops. Where you set those things are going to be probably uh, user dependent. I kind of figured out where I like them. I started about a thousand apart, but I've discovered that 
the Rotax just doesn't have that much useful res rev range that uh, eating up a thousand RPM of that uh, hanging on the soft limiter, rat tat 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 tat, uh, is not is not a, a viable strategy for me all t all the time. So I've narrowed that feature down to about 500 revs. But I play with it a little bit here and there and give myself an extra 100 or take away a little bit. As a side note, Ron Wood told me many years ago, take a tooth off, you'll go faster. I don't think we even were, had got to the point of me telling him what gearing I was running. That's just kind of an axiom of the Rotex. And I would say, particularly if you're newer to the Rotex, Definitely get a tack and figure out where you're revving. They don't need to rev. In the eight grand range for a 600 is probably pretty good. Other guys may have a bit of a different opinion, but I've had a fair deal of success uh, over many, many years by uh, living in that 8,000 RPM range in a 600. So bottom line, do I think you should have one of these? Absolutely. If you have a Rotax, particularly a bigger one, something in the 600s, you're going to tweak the crank. These things were just not made for the horsepower that we make now. And that big piston takes that crank and does this to it. And eventually it gets tweaked. Mine goes back regularly. The crank is always tweaked just a little bit. That bending back and forth is just like a coat hanger. You're just putting stress on it and that stresses the bearings and then you crack the cases getting cases for these is not quite as easy as it used to be so uh, that would de definitely be my recommendation not to mention it's a great tuning strategy to know where that soft limiter is when you hit it you know right where you are that helps you adjust gearing the um, lack of stress in staging knowing that i'm not uh, running two flamethrowers out past my exhaust valves and waiting it for waiting for it to cough and sputter and then desperately looking for somebody who's willing to push start me right before I have to line up uh, with all that stress gone at, at the price point of this item I think it's a must-have so that's my opinion love to hear what uh, you think about this uh, what you think I might have missed if you have any questions put them in the comments down below Again, if you like this type of detailed content, please do me a favor, uh, subscribe, hit the notification bell, like the video, comment, share with your buddies. I know that's a lot, but that's how YouTube decides that this content's worth uh, watching. So thanks for watching.